Many people say that individuals carry their own inner truths, but do we really know what we're talking about when we hear the word individual? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you understand by the term individual? Please comment below the video so I can enter into a conversation with you. If you believe that thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can debate thought, subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. For Nietzsche, being is becoming. There is no unity of will, desire or being that can be found. In the book Will to Power, Nietzsche says, citation, My hypothesis, the subject is multiplicity. Nietzsche goes against the prevailing way of thinking about being, even today. Today still prevails the, the idea of being as unity, the subject as univocal. For Nietzsche, the will is a constellation of forces, which exist only in relation to other forces, composing with them or struggling between them. These forces include historical and cultural events. The interiority of a subject is neither the origin nor the dwelling place of the will. The will is always the will to power. Power is these relations of multiple, multiple forces and contradictions. But Nietzsche will show that in the history of thought, the idea was created that being would exist at the origin of everything that happens, a subject as the origin of the forces of history. Metaphysical thought attempts to place a fixed order in history where all history could be traced back to an origin in being. But Nietzsche showed how this idea is a product of a weakened will to power, a will against life, because it tries to organize, to manage all life reactively, because it wants to organize and correct everything, even what is uncorrectable and cannot be managed. The metaphysical culture, which is still dominant today, is a culture where we can say that what is properly political is absent. For what is placed at the origin of history and actions in the world is an interiority of the subject. This interiority functions vertically in relation to truth, which means that the subject deals with truth as a production between its interiority and abstract uh, truths directly. There is an absence here of horizontal productions of truth, productions that would be realized in the relations between subjects, between subjects and history, culture, nature, etc. In this vertical relationship between subject, the subject's interiority and truth, the world is secondary. Historical relations are secondary or even non-existent. All relationships involving others, which involve our, our horizontal relations with the forces of the world and its differences, are secondary to the dominant culture. Nietzsche pointed to the power that this gener generated uh, for the Christian church, for the priest, who was the one authorized to speak the truth, who had this vertical relationship with truth, with God, and who was authorized to speak of truth. The church flock uh, should just follow what the priest said. Foucault showed how this kind of relationship with truth and power which he called pastoral power, was instrumental in producing the modes of subjectivity which are, which are still dominant nowadays. Foucault showed that pastoral power represented one of the main forces of the history of production of subjectivity. What pastoral power produced is a mode of subjectivity 
where the relation of self to, to itself, self to self, mediated by an authority on truth like a priest, and nowadays gurus or tr truth experts, is the way that subjects come to be produced. So we have subjects looking to authorities on truth in order to understand themselves as subjects and also to understand their relations to other subjects and the world at large. This prioritization of an internal relation to truth blocks the politicization of knowledge through which relational knowledge would be possible. In this system of thought, liberation comes through a confession of truth of the self to an authority on truth or a submission to this authority uh, is considered freedom itself. The subject is produced in such a way that relations of self to self operate as the highest priority and value. To be true to yourself becomes the highest value, but your being is already constructed through a subjection to an authorized truth. And what this production of truth-centered subjectivity does is produce individualization, but not an individualization that is open to multiplicity, to a certain anarchy, but actually an individualization that produces subjects in very directed and constrained ways. Nowadays, pastoral power mutated into truth circulating in the market and subject, subjects looking to the market to find the truths that they think can best articulate their true selves. Subjects obey authorities on truth because these reflect their true selves. This is the dominant discourse on subjectivity. In the present, with neoliberal forms of subjectivity, the self looks to maximize itself to be all that it can be, to be a happy, normal, healthy, and productive subject in a self-interested obedience to authority. An obedience to authority that rests on the identity of the truth held by that authority and the truth of the self. This form of subjug subjugation and subjectivation is what is called freedom. So liberation comes through a confession of truth and a submission to an authority on truth that is seen as necessary for salvation or for liberation. And these truths, they are produced and circulate in the market. In this process, links to communities, to struggles, to the political realm are erased in the name of the subject's maximizing of itself as a political economic resource. Subjectivation or the production of subjectivities happens within institutional, discursive, and cultural and historic practices that are linked to each other, such that if institutions and practices do not change, the change in subjectivity means very little to nothing in the political order, since it is this order that produces subjectivities. Resistance to the organizations of practices of the self is certainly necessary. However, political resistance would realize the need for alliances between social movements to make possible social change that is not subject or truth-centered. Truth-centered politics is a must for liberal political culture, which is our dominant political culture. So if we remain within truth-centered politics, we will just be reproducing liberal political culture. Liberal political culture produces the obedience to self as the avenue to escape oppression. It does not think the process of subjectivation, of the production of self as a political practice itself. What neoliberalism does is to protect the sanctity of private subjects. In this order, the only job of the political sphere is to safeguard individuals and private liberties and interests. The state acts 
when private interests are threatened. And this is seen as political action itself, when in fact it is the maintenance of individualization as the only desirable action. In its forms of knowledge, the knowledges that it legitimates, which speak the language of political economy, this biopolitical order is based on the dualisms of individual versus society or state versus civil society. Society is the constant threat to individual here, and the state is the constant threat to civil society. The state equated with the political or the political reduced to the rationalized action of the state is a politics that must act in a way that invisibilizes its own actions. It must only do that which civil society cannot manage to do alone, and the state is called to act in order to permit that subjects maximize themselves as resources so they can work for the market. Neoliberalism fetishizes the technological as its highest example of rationality. It instrumentalizes rationality. It makes knowledge possible because the population is expected to always be seeking to maximize itself, to be happy, normal, healthy, productive. This biopolitical order is where subjects are produced as self-maximizing, and the role of power would be to provide the space for self-maximizing subjects. This is what Foucault called the biopolitical order. In this order, every violence is justified as part of a continuous process of progress and development. Those that fail or resist individualization through self-maximization are seen as lacking, and this order will make sure that they are either annihilated or incorporated into the right, the true kind of self-maximizing subject, or else suffer the consequences of exclusion or annihilation. But where is the political to be found today? And that uh, is not action within biopolitics or neoliberalism. Social movements today reproduce biopolitics and neoliberalism when they insist on a truth of themselves that is an identity that holds their unity. Identity politics is one of the spaces where this reproduction occurs. However, there are movements that not only reproduce but also challenge the biopolitical order. For example, the queer movement uh, in the world in the United States at first chose for itself the name queer as a way to resist the confining identities that are based on sexuality as a truth of the subject. However, there is tremendous variety within this movement itself, and in it we find as well the old identity politics that ascribes truth to subjects, with sex as an interior truth of the subject. Besides this example, we can say that all social movements today because they are all living within forms of neoliberalism, reproduce biopolitics in one form or another. To resist neoliberal governmentality, because it reduces possibilities for political action, means to promote knowledges and forms of subjectivity and political alliances that are not based on truth or identity. It means to produce political action that is not centered around a truth of the self or a truth as foundational, truth as primary to political action. It means the possibility of becoming other through political action and through practices of self that are not truth centered. Religious intolerance, homophobia, racism, xenophobia, uh, patriarchy are practiced from a view that there is a truth of being. Therefore, we cannot use the weapons of oppression against oppression itself, acting as if the truth of being were liberating suddenly. Neither suffering nor the joy of being who we are can be considered our liberating truth without us paying the price of our subjection to what we fight as oppression against us. 
The struggle against forms of oppression must start from other places, from horizontal relations with differences in the construction of non-purity, which do not have as their starting point or point of arrival a supposed interiority of the subject, because this is already the way by which the depoliticization of liberal political culture happens. Placing the truth of the subject at the center of political activity is the means of our subjection. It is the working of neoliberalism that produces us as resources for its own reproduction. Resisting neoliberalism must therefore include ways of escaping the trap of identity politics and the affirmation of a truth of the self. Resistance to neoliberalism must be made in the production of spaces where attention to those who are being included and those who are being excluded from political practices is central. For no resistance is total, no resistance is pure, no resistance can be complete, and no resistance is the expression of the ultimate truth of a being. Today, economic neoliberalism needs to be fought as much as neoliberalism as a political culture. We will not be able to regain political activity, which is the field of collectivities, without a direct confrontation with neoliberalism in all its forms, in all its ways of becoming. Well, people, now I need you to comment, ask on Facebook or YouTube, so I can enter into a conversation with you in the next videos. This is an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault. It is a video conversation where the questions brought by you, I bring to the debate and I also bring more questions. See you next Thursday.